Hello. Hello. How are you, man? I'm okay. All Thank good. you for having me. Thanks Thank, a lot. Thank a you for uh, Finally. reaching out. It's it's all in place now. Mm-hmm. How are you? Good. Uh, after class, there's not a class to go in the mm. afternoon. Yeah, good. A working day. Ending of semester, how was that? End of semester is hectic. Uh, a lot of students suddenly remember that they don't have enough points, so they get their appointments for extra points. Yeah. Um, and you have to be there. And, you know, it's a lot of work. Uh, grading, plus other things that we are doing to improve the university constantly. Uh, you know, grants, funding, opportunities, travel, and yeah. a lo- lot of things. So, but hopefully all good? All good. It's busy. It's good busy, but it's very busy. Yes. Busy, very good busy. Yeah. That's good. You can do that. Mm. So uh, I want to start with you with something of the rails here. I've heard that you really hate Halloween. Why is that? <laughs> uh, I think who kn- I know who told you that. Probably Fatima or some other student. Um, I would never. I, I would. I not hate disclose. Halloween. I I I don't think that it belongs in in a university. Uh, I'm yeah. a sort of a. I believe in discipline and in growing up. And mm. by by the time in a, you're in the university, I think Halloween it's fine if you're ten. Okay. But anyway, some people want to keep thing. going a little bit. Yeah. Okay. You know, if okay. you dress up like a butterfly, you know, people tend not to take you as as seriously. I guess. But I mean, I don't dress that spectacularly well, especially for an Italian. But you know, I don't dress like a butterfly. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. So it's with the butterfly. Uh, my teaching assistant came to class uh, dressed as a butterfly, and he, you know, if you if you have if you're teaching, you should be dressed, you know, for teaching, not as a butterfly. And the idea, oh, but it's Halloween. Well, um, too bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you you mentioned Italy. So how was that like growing up there? Oh, growing up in Italy in the eighties and in the nineties was probably. Everybody would say that, I think, about their own birthplace, but it was okay. the best place in the world. It, it is potentially the best place in, in the world, bar none. Uh, it is very mismanaged um, okay. still. It's now a very pale shadow of what it used to be. But Italy until the early, well, let's say the late 90s, maybe 2000, 2001, okay. probably the best place in, in the world. So I, I've considered myself lucky to have been growing up there in 70s, 80s, 80s and 90s. And you got like your bachelor's and master's there, right? I got my, yeah, the degree I had was before the Bologna process, which is what divides now degrees in three plus two. So you got three years of a bachelor and two years of a master generally in Europe mm-hmm. now. But that's a reform that happened after I graduated. So you so went in the, through the old system. The old version was much harder. And when I try to tell it to my students here, some some of them don't believe me, but um, the things you had to do to get your bachelor are insane. So basically now it's equivalent to a master's because it was four or five years, depending mm-hmm. on your spe- specialty. And this is for the bachelor? That was for, well, it was called a bachelor back then, but it's actually a master now. Mm, it's okay. equivalent. It's what a master is today. Okay, okay. Yeah, so so it's kind of two in one. Okay, okay. And this is during the 90s? This is in the 90s, early 90s, yes. Yeah, and like... Uh, now that you are in an Iraq university, how much differences do you think between the system? Oh, the system here, day and night. Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. From very the instructors, the people, what, what are um, the similarities? Well, when I went to university, that was already a big change from when I went to elementary school or middle school. Back then, um, the 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 teacher was allowed to discipline the students physically. Okay. So they could. Uh, That's you know, for for like elementary school. Elementary school okay. and middle school, you could have somebody, um, you know, with a little stick whipping you on the hands. Um, yeah. uh, some professors took it a little bit fur- further. They would throw some books at you, like the huge things. Yeah. Uh, you can do it now, of course. Um, and but in universities, we had some angry professor too. So it's quite different here. The but they wouldn't like do this kind of stuff for students at university. Today. Back then, uh, one professor I had threw a shoe at one of my classmates okay. once. That's the only thing that I remember. <laughs> That's like good university, though. Yeah, uh, just you know, professors were a little bit temperamental, I think. Yeah, and like, 
moving from Italy now you you moved and like you you stayed at Finland right yeah I got my second degree which is another master's degree in mm-hmm. Finland yeah how was that is it truly the happiest country on earth ah uh, it can be the happiest country on or one of the happiest it's incredibly safe clean uh the people are stupendous if you don't mind the cold and the obscurity during the winter there's there's darkness so mm. at, let's say depending on where you are more or less at 2 p.m so after lunchtime it's pitch black at 2 p.m mm-hmm. in winter <laughs> but in summer at 1 a.m it's sun in the sky Until so like you're six you're, seven Yeah, your circadian rhythms are a little bit uh, discombobulated because your brain in summer, first of all, you need black, pitch black curtains to sleep because the sun will, will come through. That's during the summer. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, during if you go up north, um, 1 a.m., there's still sun on the horizon. It doesn't go down. So there's still light. So uh, your body's not tired as it would be. Yeah. Uh, because you think it's you know it's daytime you you want to take a bike and go in these beautiful paths in the forest but it's 1 a.m. like people are sleeping mm. and so it's very strange very quiet uh, safest place cleanest place that I've ever been in stupendous and I've seen a video once like it talks about like how much like people there uh, value and appreciate their personal space and like they <laughs> Yeah, there's a joke among Finns. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, ba- basically, do you want to hear it? Yes. So the typical joke is this. Uh, Daddy takes the family for vacation. Okay. So they drive and drive and drive and drive in the middle of the forest and drive and drive for hours. Finland is a big country. Yes. Uh, so they drive and they finally he finds a path on a side road and a narrow, narrow, narrow thing in between the woods. Okay. You know, we can set camp here. So the family gets out, starts to put the tent on. Yeah. Uh, it's almost all done. And then the dad looks around and sees some smoke coming, you know, far, far away, away, far away. And says, yeah. uh, guys, we got to leave. It's too crowded. Oh, so that's <laughs> that's their humor. Yeah. So this is like, like sums up the whole... Yeah yeah, there. yeah, 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 they, yeah. They're, they're, they do love their space. Then again, Finland has what five and a half million people, roughly, uh, a country. That's, that's uh, a city in here. That's a city in here. That's maybe a village in China. Yeah. And the, the Finland has territory is quite big. It's, I think the, the size of France. So mm. you know, it's a big, it's a good chunk of land. Yeah. So like s- s- a lot of land and so many people, like. People. There's enormous space. You mm-hmm. have a, you you have entire uh, the the university uh, housing because it's not a dormitory where I stay. They actually have apartments. Okay. You have your own garden. You have you you have for students. Yeah, yeah. You have your private house and gardens and all the rest of it. And yeah, if you get a scholarship, that's, that's paid thing, for yeah. that. No, but it's not a dorm. <laughs> ah, but, but it's ironic. Uh, it's actually homes, mm. and then it's next to a forest. I I had my husky dog. I uh, put taking you know into the forest there, and um, you pass through forests even to um, to go say to the post office or the bank. And it's very odd if you come from an urban environment, from a city, mm. and you see maybe you know in winter in the morning at 7 a.m. some five year old child or six year old child going alone mm. in the forest. For us, for Europeans, if you live in a city, the forest is kind of a dangerous place. place yeah. yeah, it's a sketchy place because you know they're perfectly fine. Like go there. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, safe, ev- huh? super safe. Your your children will go uh, to school by themselves. Uh, I'll wait for the bus, which comes on time. It's heated inside, mm. so even though outside is minus twenty five, inside it's heated. Your seats are heated. Uh, it's perfectly fine. N- nothing would happen to them. Uh, you can leave your wallet, your phone, your you ca- everywhere. No, they will bring it back to your home. Not one euro will be missing. That happened to me countless times. It's that safe, huh? Yeah. Uh, they don't. I don't remember them locking their bikes in front of a supermarket, for example. And I did when I first arrived there because I lived all, all over the world, and some places are not safe. In Italy, we steal a lot. Yeah. So I went there and I had two locks for my bike, not one, two. So I was trying to, you know, hook it up to the pole, and some guy just looked looked at me and said, "Why are you doing that?" Uh, you know, to lock it. And mm-hmm. he said, "Why?" 
because otherwise they would steal it. And he said, well, we have jobs. We can buy our own bike if we want to. Mm. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So like the, most of the population there has like sufficient resources to cover up their needs. And well, they have extensive welfare programs. Nobody actually, well, you can be unemployed, of course. There's unemployed people, but there's welfare programs for, mm. for them. Uh, there are people who actually choose to be homeless um, for a number of reasons, uh, family problems. But of course, there are shelters, there are places where they go in winter because so it's they, freezing. So they would be taken care of. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. If you let's say it's a it's a society in which if you let's say in a period on your life you're you're down, you you can't work, or you don't want to work. Um, the welfare net will take care of you, and that boils down to the fact that the entire country agrees that's a good way to run the state. Mm. They're educated in, in thinking like that in school, in Scandinavia, all over the place, so Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Finland. Yes, but Finland like made some noise about like the research that popped up about like being the happiest country or something like that. Uh, Finland and Iceland, generally speaking, and Finland had a stereotype of being a country with high rates of suicides, but it's not really true. Hungary does, mm. South Korea does. Of course. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But, and they have one of the best, if not the best, education systems. So In Finland. Mm -mm. So, like if you don't mind the circadian rhythms and the temperature, if you're good with cold, but then again, it's dry cold. I don't remember a lot of rain. It, it very rarely rains. It snows a lot. Mm. Yeah. So if you got good clothes, uh, I mean, inside your house, it's so it's so hot that you would go in shorts. Yeah. So um, that's not a problem. Uh, streets are are cleaned at night, so the government would have, you know, some um, snow machines, you know, cleaning the the streets. So it's fine. Okay, Finland it is. Mm. Moving. To something else, yeah. The Korean program. Our yeah, you do need to learn. Well, if you learn the language, is better. However, Finnish is one of the most complicated in the world. So. Mm. But you can get by by English, right? Everybody speaks English, of course. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Ev everybody from kids to um, so all people. All oh yeah. Yeah. So moving to yes. the program. To the Korean program. Korean program. Yeah. I'll take a sip so, of water. Yeah, yeah. So when I first heard about this, it was like. A bit weird to hear about like a program in Korea. Why? I don't know. We like most of the scholarships or programs that we hear about are like Europe. Oh, I see, Britain, I see. I see. I see. The US, see. Yeah. maybe Italy or France, but like yeah. the number are, the numbers are very small. And I've heard some problems about like <coughs> Japan or this kind of stuff. Right. But like this is the first time that I hear about. Korean. But Korea is quite famous. I was surprised when I arrived here and I started to mention Korea or my my experience. And a lot of students, uh, it turns out, they're quite acquainted with K-pop and the yeah, culture that's, that's what and could. cosmetics yeah. and uh, and whatnot. So, if you have that kind of demand among the people, then I think it, it makes sense to me that you could have some more academic ties with the country. Yeah, for um, me, it was like. I thought like it's only movies, TV shows, and music. I didn't mm -hmm. think it would get oh, to. Oh, it's, it's a, uh, that's the first thing that I tell to all my students since I arrived here about a year and a half ago. I always ask them what they want to do in the future, and for those who reply that they would like to go abroad for a period, I ask them why, and then I ask them where, mm. and they all say Canada, Germany, uh, and I I look at them as a European t today. Maybe in the 80s, yes, yeah. or I would have moved to Canada or the United States, but not today. Good Why? Lord, oh my goodness, no. I don't believe the opportunities exist there anymore that they did 45 years ago or 40 years ago. Those opportunities are in Asia, are, are in East Asia. The reason why uh, we're doing this here is not just because Korea is my area of expertise. So Dr. Tobin likes East Asia too. It's because we believe that it's actually the major opportunities there. The, that is, the Middle East and East Asia are the two poles of, you know, that are going to be uh, the major actors and the new players in the world over the next 50 years. For real? 
yeah, uh, that's the same reaction that I get in all my classes, and I, people don't believe it. There, of course, yeah. but the numbers just speak very clearly, demographically, and in terms of resources, in terms of mentality, the willingness to to develop, to have, you know, uh, stable family relations. Um, Innovation. You look at his stage; has got a lot of it. You look at the Middle East; has got most of these things. And so you do the math, and yeah, either one of the two or a combination of Middle East and East Asia is going to take over the planet in the next, I would say, less than thirty years. That's for sure. Mm. Mm. So it's not not longer a Western. Game. No, I think by the time you're my age, the world would be entirely different. It would be. It, it would look. <laughs> I think something like a Asian version of Dubai with an Islamic component, of course. Mm. Well, yeah, culturally, yeah. And this is uh, East Asia? That is, in my opinion, the combination of East Asia and the Middle East, which are two worlds that don't have full communication yet. And yes. This is another reason why why we're doing this. Bec- I think mostly because of the language barrier, right? Language barrier and, and because uh, East Asia has been developing for quite some time. So when you're in the developing phase, then mm. you don't think about expanding to another developing area. But yeah. now the Middle East has peaks, you know, you say Qatar, United, you know, Saudi, Emirates, those are very developed. Or fast developing mm-hmm. and you have areas that are that still have a lot of potential for development Iraq is one of them mm. um, North Africa is one of them uh, and so when you uh, now they start to look at this part of the world because they're mature uh, they're independent enough they don't need the West to run things for them yeah uh, I mean, China is all over the place. Yeah. China bought half of Africa. It owns half of Africa already, and it's you know it's getting through the the Middle East. They have very good relations with Saudi, of course, with Qatar, with all the you know oil countries in the Gulf. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense for them. Europe has no resources. We have history. We have culture. We have. Uh, political dominance we have had I think we we don't have that any, anymore um, but if you look at where the resources are where the people are it's, it's either, and where the technology is it's either East Asia and or the Middle East so it, it makes sense to bring them together bring them closer huh? Mm. this is really like fascinating and take on on the situation and I think it's also it's also a hopeful thing for like students here that you can like either like work and like start something here or like go somewhere like it's not as far as like moving to uh, far co- continents like it's it's we're st- it's still in the same continent as we are but like yeah and it's another model of integration i think because if you think a if you look at germany now they mm-hmm. have a huge pop- population of uh turkish yes kurdish yeah a lot of them Italy, uh, we have a lot of people from Kurdistan. But see, the European model is a welfare state model, mm. which is attractive if you, let's say, are in the af- unfortunate position of coming out of a war zone. You're a refugee for a couple of years, and yes. you, you go into a place that really takes good care of you. We, we did, as Europeans. But uh, China, Korea, Japan, they're much more competitive. Yeah. So they can be, they can look harsher at the beginning. If you look at their scholarship, if you look at what the students do, if you look at the conditions, the the parameters, the benchmarks, those people are immensely competitive. Mm. And so it can be scary the first time to tell to somebody, well, from here, from the, this region, yeah, I will try to get a scholarship in China, try to get a scholarship in Korea, because the language, as you said, the environment is completely different, the culture is different. It's so many people, I mm. mean. Uh, uh, Tokyo metropolitan a- area, Seoul's metropolitan area have, have more people than I think than could that than Kurdistan or or Iraq. Uh, Seoul is twenty two million people. Mm. Yeah. Tokyo GTA is twenty five million people. So That's, it's scary. Yeah, but uh, but 
you can learn a lot from their model of development. That's one of the things that we do now in a couple of courses in the new IR major, the Korean study course, uh, the politics in, e in East Asia course. We teach what is the model of development. If you look at those countries, uh, Korea was as poor as Bangladesh in the 60s. By the year 2000, it became one of the largest economies in the world and now it has i think it has surpassed italy it's like number 11 so in the world so from as bangladesh to ha, that it, it is in 60 years less than 60 years that is insane and why do you think that is it resources or like no they have zero resources they so have what's, zero what's the trick? they have zero resources they have been devastated by a brutal civil war yes they have been conquered by foreign powers enorm a number of of time so uh, it's a fascinating model for i think for iraq and kurdistan because it's not explained by a, a lot of theorists it's not explained by colonialism it's not explained by all this you know notions that if you're a colony imperialist then you have a disadvantage sometime but korea is not like that singapore is not like that mm. singapore used to be a poor fisherman village a colony taken by Arab pirates first in in the Indonesian, the British, uh, and look now, it's the f most advanced place on the planet. It is 40 years ahead of, of everybody else in every field. Without resources? Zero resources. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny island at the tip of the Malaysian peninsula. It has no oil, nothing like that. Wow. <laughs> so there's there's some things that they do quite well, and then I think it's good for young people here to learn them. What would you summarize these things as a country that has resources uh, could do? Train young people, like we do at the U.S., yeah. uh, to learn from not not a you can call them a set of values, but I prefer a model of development that actually has proven to work. Okay. If you lift a country from poverty and you bring it to be in the top 10 of the world and you, be, you, there must be you a become a something. giant yeah. in technology like Korea or China, well, you did something good. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's good. without a doubt. So we, you teach uh, the kind of politics they have, the, uh, the economic models, the uh, ethics, uh, the values at work, the emphasis they put on education. They are crazy for education. Mm. the money they invest, the time they put in it. The family is completely dedicated to raising the next generation as prodigies, as geniuses. They have extra courses for everything. They, mm. they study a lot. Uh, they're very inter and entrepreneurial. They're, they're committed. They, they don't sleep that much, I think. Really? <laughs> no. They don't believe in a good eight-hour sleep? No, I come from a siesta country, you know, we sleep in the afternoon, we like to take a nap. Yeah. Italians after lunch, Koreans don't. They don't sleep? No, they might have a little nap in the office. Yeah. But I mean, we go home four hours between the morning shift and the afternoon shift. That's crazy because we need to eat pasta yeah. and cook very well. And have a, uh, and then have, yeah, and then have a nap and then go back to work. They don't do that. Mm. No. So, lastly, but like, how <laughs> how would you perform well if you are not getting a good Well, sleep? I learned when I went to Korea the first times. I I was I had a shock. I I went. I had a nervous breakdown. I lost a lot of weight. Uh, my lunch break back then was twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Yeah, that's a lunch break. That, and the lunch break is like you are at, you are at on a skyscraper where you have a company or an office. You have mm. to go down thirty floors with an elevator. All the restaurants are on are on the street there packed with people yeah they eat so fast there's some of some of the uh, hot stone bowls they they use for soups are still steaming after they finished and so then they go get, back it didn't get cold absolutely though. not they, they do things fast they're they're, yeah. they're very you know high power efficient they have a high charge i don't know they have a lot of uh, they literally what, what they do don't you think like motiv motivate like to be such an individual 
Um, there like, is, is it like f- fearing there is, something? There or is like one of the things. Something? One of the things that we teach in the course is a set of values. You um, the one of the former leaders of Singapore used to speak of Asian values and governance. You know the inheritance of you know Confucian values, which places a lot of emphasis on skills on, yeah. on education. Uh, to use a stereotype, you could say it's in their blood. Uh, they really like to overachieve to perform well Mm -hmm. Uh, socially it is considered really bad if you don't have a diploma if you don't you could be a skilled trader of course there's a lot of honor and respect in being an electrician or a plumber they make a lot of money but everybody needs to get some certification exactly some degree some certification yeah kind of have that as well here but like you don't seem that um, the most of the population are thrived to get that so do you know what i get what i mean yeah i met like as a like an overall population's mentality let's put it in this but is that a family thing here i yeah i I don't know like it's a social thing it's a family thing like i met a couple of students that um you know conversing it you know it turns out they came from really wealthy families here yeah and so my reaction as as an Italian is, well, if your family is that rich, what are you doing here? Mm. Uh, because if, if I came from nothing, but if I had that kind of family, maybe I wouldn't have worked. I would probably be in Polynesia on the beach all my life. So my question is, why are you not young student from a very rich family in Polynesia on the beach? And the answer was, well, I would be the first in my family to have a, d- a degree, so it's prestigious. Yeah. Even though they say it, I don't need it because you know we have we money. Have money yeah. yeah. So, but, but Asians, as far as it's not prestige, it's actually you don't get good opportunities if you don't apply yourself. Mm. If you don't prove that you can do better and more than other people. So it's less about like the people's mentality of we have to achieve this and this and this it's more on this is what society demands of me so i'm going to achieve that can we put it in this way we can it's uh, still of course we are we're generalizing but we can we we, we certainly can yes mm. yeah and this is for asia i would say east asia in general you'll find that in southeast asia as well so thailand vietnam cambodia myanmar laos uh, but my experience is more with east asia for life and work yeah. and so korea in particular that's why we we built the, this program uh well so first we applied for a grant yeah you know generous grant from the korean government we got it because uh it, it's the first time that uh, an institution in this region opens anything related to Korea at a serious un- university level meaning that before if you if you wanted to to study anything related to East Asia you had to go to Turkey mm. or you could go to Jordan sometimes or if you look at a Gulf there's nothing like that there's nothing in Saudi there's one research center that does a few policy studies on on East Asia, but in terms of university, pre- preparing the younger generation, uh, let's say to build a bridge with East Asia, mm. we're the only one, and it's in Kurdistan, so it's I think is is meaningful. So we asked Korea uh, for grants; they they have funds that they give to countries every year. We made a plan, de- designed the courses. And with this money now, we are giving two scholarships every year to study here at the U.S. So we, we pay for the studies of two students here at the U.S. Mm. In uh, Provided that they choose as a major either IS or IR, then the same money also pays for two students mm. to be fully um, employed as research assistants on a yearly basis. Mm-hmm. And then another part of that money will finance a trip to Korea for two faculty, that's generally myself and Dr. Tobin, to build institutional relations with universities, and two or three students every year. And this is the first leg of a program, which is a three-year foundation program. If we complete this successfully as a U.S., mm-hmm. Korea will evaluate us, and if we pass the evaluation, they will give us a five-year program. Mm. After that, after this, so more money, more funds. We we will be 
able to hire a language teacher to open a Korea language program. We already have very good ties with, with the consulate in Erbil, uh, with, the, amba- with the, the, the embassy in Baghdad. The ambassador came to visit and for the opening of the center uh, at the beginning of November. Yes. Uh, they have been very impressed, of course, uh, because it's the first time that they see anything like this here. And let me say that, I mean, it's also good for Iraq in general because the reputation of Iraq in the last 30 years ha- hasn't been uh, associated to good things, unfortunately. Yes. And so for Asian countries to see, oh, look, they're doing, they're doing that stuff, yeah. not in, in Israel. They're doing that not in Italy. They're doing that in Iraq. Mm. Oh, wow. Then maybe things are changed or changing at least. I agree. This yeah. is like... It looks good, sounds good, and like... It's good for students, and, and yeah. again, it points them, at least it lets them know that, and I like to do that, that there's another front to which they can look for opportunities, which they haven't explored so far, because I understand, I more or less, I'm, I'm the age of my students' parents. And so their parents, like me, they used to look at the, the, at the U.S. as a destination, or, yes. or England, or yeah, Germany, it's, it's, right? the dream goal yeah it's the dream well i'm here to tell the students well look east because east is looking at you look closer huh? because east asia is looking at you they are they they want relationship with this part of the world because it's dynamic it's got all the resources you have a lot of people you have a lot of young people europeans have zero kids Mm, japanese has zero, zero kids koreans have zero kids they stopped. And so demography plays a role too. The amount so, of the population. Yeah, so if, if East Asia is looking at you, then why wouldn't you prepare yourself for a future that uh, enables you to work with them rather than for them? Well, this is amazing. Yeah. Well, what, what recommendations would you get to students who are like applying or interested in, the, in this program? Well. On an academic level or and on a personal level, what uh, should they expect since like you live there? Do what you can, first and foremost, to equip yourself with the tools to succeed there. So change your mentality a little bit, which doesn't mean you have to forget that you're Kurdish or, okay. or Iraqi. Yeah. You just have to add things to, your to vocabulary. the... Exactly. So... Your English has to be fluent, of course, because mm-hmm. there's no longer enough uh, fluent English is just the minimum now yeah if you speak as many people do in this region another language with Farsi Sarani Kurmanji Arabic one of them you're already a little step ahead now learn an Asian language look I grew up in the 70s and in the 80s yeah I had to walk to a library if they had the book yeah. to get a paper book and do a research. And I, I wrote my first uh, thesis on a typewriter. I had a computer for the first time when I was 26. Wow. <laughs> now, you, you, have, you have this, you have smartphones. Uh, you literally have everything. It's, it's not a stereotype. You literally have every bit of knowledge you need in your pocket. If you just use it for TikTok, well, I'm sorry, but that's on you. Mm. If you just, uh, uh, what I'm surprised is I know more about how to find things on, online than, than a lot of my students seem seems to. And when I ask them, well, what do you do all day with the smartphones? Because I see you, I see you in Bakhtiari, I see you in, on campus. Yeah. What are you doing? TikTok, Instagram. So you're passively consuming the images and the videos of the lives of other people but you're not building one for yourself. What are you doing? Well, you're wasting your life. It's precious. Yeah, what? Vocabulary, apps, yeah. uh, YouTube courses. Uh, uh, there's tons of things. I put all these things on Moodle for my students. I even, at the beginning of the course, set up my free time, instead of going to lunch, to do a vocabulary, uh, a language class for you know, for free. It's not a course. It's just, you know, to teach the basics of Koreans to my student. Mm. But they they don't even need that. They can learn that by themselves. I learned English by myself. I've learned the basic of Korean by myself. I know people that have learned Japanese by themselves. Japanese. Here too. 
Wow. So fluent. Yeah. Mm -mm. There, there's one student here. So it is completely it self-taught. So it's it's. Look, I'm trying to learn Arabic now. Okay. So somebody will help me with the alphabet and the rest of it. But you know, all the resources are there. The videos are there. The grammar courses are there. It's all free. That's the best part. It's free. Why wouldn't you do that? That's the question. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But like the thing is, like it's so much. It's like an addiction now. It's like this dopamine, like this instant, instant yeah, dopamine. Yeah, like yeah. Your generation is is yeah. li lives in an unfortunate time because you you the, most of the validation you need when you're twenty. Um, you know, in my time, we got it from doing things, and now yeah. you get it from the judgment of strangers. Yes. Which is horrendous. If you think, if you, if I could recommend anything, you said, what would you suggest? Well, ditch all your socials at least for a year, clean your life. Uh, don't look at them. Just cancel all y your accounts. If you can do that and employ that time in a more meaningful way, take an online course, learn a language, force yourself to think in that that language. I mean, the amount of opportunities that are there. Uh, I. When I can, I also send emails to my students with scholarship links, and it's just a drop in the ocean. There's so many opportunities. That I, I didn't have that. Mm. I couldn't apply online. I didn't have internet. <laughs> you know, you can apply for a scholarship now. There's scholarship from the Korean government, from the Japanese government. They cover everything. They actually pay you to live there. Why wouldn't you do that as, as a 20-year-old man or woman? Uh, you can go anywhere today if you get a scholarship. Yeah. Because, you know, that covers the eventual problems that you might have for uh, for a visa because I understand having a passport from Iraq is not the same as having a passport from the UK. Yeah. But a scholarship will take care of that. So give yourself the chance. Uh, uh, learn the values that these this countries have. Mm. Again, if you go to Europe, you you go there. You know, there's a big welfare system, and so you, yeah, you know, the the state will take care of you. You would get along for a while. That's the problem. You get comfortable, and the comfort zone is a trap. Yes, it, because it's comfortable. That, yeah. And if it's comfortable, then why push yourself, right? Yes. Now look at the scholarships that the the Korea had there's a beautiful scholarship which covers everything is given by the government is called the global Korea scholarship GKS now every country has a number of allotments Iraq has only three and I presented to some of the students say oh well, there is only three spots why do you look at that that way why don't you say oh wow I can get one it's mentality too yeah. you need to adopt again you don't have to erase your roots but you have to add something that you don't have yet, which is the very uh, um, achieving competitive mentality that East Asian countries have. So that's the main, main gist of it, would say. I would say so. Learn the language if you can. Follow my courses. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's the only ones that we have here. So. Yeah. Yeah. This is like, this is an amazing. I mean, it's it's all well said and makes so much sense that and uh, Korea is what has been done so far we do have other plans in the making I'm not giving details un uh, until things are achieved because yeah. we don't like to talk about things that are not here yet yeah. but we're working on a number of other things to do for the US so we really want to build a, a bridge um, between uh, this region this university in particular and East Asia. Uh, I, I came here for that and uh, the university is giving me the freedom to do that too so that's that's nice and it's the only institution that the Korean government actually trusted. Mm. The first thing that the consul told us when we went to visit them the first time in Erbil is that they had tried for years to establish a language program or any relationship with a university here in Iraq, not just in Kurdistan and they said we couldn't find one that was even remotely reliable. Mm. Yeah, you know, a university has to have auditing, yes, accounting, yes, yes, certain yes. things in place. Well, you've heard it, folks, Yanni. 
learned Korean and learn Korean, learn Japanese, learn Chinese, learn Indonesian. Very easy language. You can learn the new, yeah, you can learn it in eight months, and it opens the door to an enormous market, largest Muslim country in the world, one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Southeast Asia, tons of opportunities. They have now discovered huge de- deposit of nickel and lithium, so they're advancing in the green economy, you know, green cars like Tesla. They're yeah. building all the kind of stuff. Why wouldn't you go there? It's an amazing place. So, in, in the midst of all that, then yes. why did you come to Iraq? Oh, uh, um... Well, I applied for jobs. I was on a break. I was doing research in Japan for a think tank there. Okay. Um, and I started sending application. After a year of break, I got married in between. Yeah. I was in South America. Uh, at some point, my savings were, run- were running out. So I said, well, m- maybe it's time to look for another job. And so I did. And I got a few offers. Mm. And then the hardest thing that I had to do was to go through one, two, I think three interview with Dr. Fritz, Dr. Tobin. Uh, every interview was about two and a half hours and they grilled me. <laughs> and then President Bruce, we had an, another call. After I think three interviews, I got an offer and uh, yeah, that's it. You're here, huh? Mm-hmm. And how is it? How is Iraq compared to all the places that well, you've been in? I can't say Iraq because I haven't been any. I've been in in Erbil three times. Okay. I've been on a tour. Forgive me, but I forgot the name. In some canyon. Yeah. Uh, six hours from Suli okay. on a little bus with a tour company. That's all I know. So I cannot say that I know what Iraq is. What about the people here? The people are nice. The, some of them remind me of some characters that I saw in Italy when I was a child. How come? Um, How come? Well, if you go to the bazaar, you find a lot of these this, this characters uh, that we, we used to have. We don't have them anymore. anymore for some reason, no. You know, before we became Europeans, we were a little bit more colorful, like here. Yeah. And then when Europe comes, you sort of become a little bit more German, all of you. <laughs> it's all blends in, huh? It's all, yeah, you know, it, it, yeah. Um, so it's it, 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 it's it's okay. I wish there was the sea. I I I was born by the seaside, so you sh- that's you I'm, should you should I join that. my home city. Which it's, which one? It's in the south. So Shat al Arab. Do you know where like the Tigris and the Euphrates they oh, meet? Oh, okay. So the little piece of coast. Yeah, the little piece. So they meet in, right, like, right, right. in the south, and then they go down together and like they they spill their stuff in in the Arabian Gulf so mm-hmm. that point it's where my house is oh okay yeah. then I have yeah I do you need have that to, especially during the winter and like I do need that yeah the I, weather is amazing and I, like the view and like I can show you later it's amazing I have a number of students that are from from the south and they, yeah. they all seem Allah to as well. they all oh <laughs> yeah. they all okay, seem to miss home very very much yeah it's it's amazing and like from my end like you talked about academic wise and what I see as well from the sports sides as well like we had the first football tournament down in the south in like 30 40 years oh wow yeah so like uh, like as a country we are I think you can s- uh, like w- vote for Italy in this one for here as well we are like really crazy about football yeah i've seen that yeah, yeah. oh you know one beautiful thing for example this is i can't rem- maybe aside from south america where i spent some time because my wife is colombian um he, this is the only place where i i still see kids that play in the street play yeah. football on the street i did that when i was a child but this is the 70s mm-hmm. it that thing disappeared it did yeah. maybe if you go to Napoli to Naples today in the south of Italy which is a lot of Mediterranean influence some little village in Spain but today in a big city in Europe you don't see football I dare anymore. you you would not find children that can actually play on the street it's become dangerous yeah uh, parents don't let you out anymore yeah. my parents just threw me out of the house at 
8 a.m. and just go, come back at 10 p.m. I don't want to see you, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's that's builds a character. And it builds, it builds a character, and then you, you go here. I live in Park City, like all all the faculty here. Yeah. And you go just in front of Park City, you turn the corner in one of the, uh, the alley. There's always a group of kids that are, they're playing, you know, they're throwing the ball bam, in yeah. front of a gate. I haven't seen that since the 80s. Yeah, so building on that, like using sports as well to build like good connections. Because like, as I said, 30, 40 years, we hadn't had like mm-hmm. any official football tournament. And now with having the right infrastructure as like for the two very like beautiful stadiums that we have down in the south we're having like international football matches that are really entertaining and like the fans are like so excited about like being there and witnessing that and i think that's also good to Mm. to portray a nice image that's not only through Uh, academia it's through sports and like oh yeah through many things Yeah, that did you they, can. Did, did you? I heard you had some games here too. Uh, at, the, at the campus? On campus. Yeah, 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 there's a football tournament here as well. There's an a- AUIS team? Yeah, yeah, AUIS football tournament. It's every semester. I and wonder like if any of my students are in, are in, are in the team. They yeah, don't, probably. They don't look particularly sporty, though. No? That, that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> they smoke too much. That's the thing. The, 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 I, Everybody, I see, I've seen football everyone, players who smoke here, before each game. Yeah. We used <laughs> <laughs> we we used to have that too right? like yeah. yeah 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 they smoke too much but i think they can still make it i mean if you're 20 you should be able to make it yeah. I, i can now but so yeah smoking before and after each game is a ritual here <laughs> it's fantastic then yeah. i i need to come to some of the games then yes you should it's, it's really entertaining so as i said like football like sports academia and throughout like all of these different ways that we can finally just expand and like get as away as possible from just depending on resources because I think you agree with me that just like an economy that's based solely on resources it's it's not no a long term I've, I've, I've solution. Absolutely not. I think if you look at what Saudi is doing with the vision 2030 yes. plan that's the line that they have I mean Saudi has the resources that they have so it's not comparable but The direction is there. Even yeah. They're not blind. They know that that thing is going to, maybe it's not going to run out. I I don't believe that as a resource. The need for that is going to run out. And the so value. The value. So yeah. they want to be ready for something else. And why wouldn't you be? I mean, after all, again, in the West, many people don't know. I'm starting to discover that myself just now. But Oman, Saudi, Qatar, the Emirates, um, Iran is beautiful places. You mm. don't know that because that's most of what you see on the media about this re- this region is not particularly inviting, <laughs> and it's a pity because I'm pretty sure there's that one of the trips that I want to take as soon as possible is to, is to Saudi, but well, the south of Iraq and mm. then Saudi. You must mu- you must diversify. It's it it's the same with your personal finances. You mm. wouldn't have only one you know you, you, yeah you, you don't you know as, as i say you don't put all your eggs in one basket so why yes. why why would you do that as a country yeah it's really true and like it's really good to see that you're working on the academic and other people are working on so many other stuff to to move to somewhere that's hopefully brighter mm. because like as a country it This country has been so through so many stuff and like bad governments and wars and all of co- all this kind of stuff that's really affecting people on the long run. Mm-mm. So having that it's Yeah, well one thing that I would say here is that it don't don't rely on the government too much. Yeah, of course. Even if you were in Sweden and mm. you have a really good government or, or in Iceland where you're absolutely sure always that have that plan B. Oh, plan B, plan C, plan D. You have tons of plans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't. It's just as an individual, I don't believe in dependence on the government in mm. general. Uh, individuals should be able, unless you have an unfortunate accident at birth or something like, like that. In that case, yeah, you do deserve all the assistance that is possible. But, but if you're young, healthy, capable, smart, and as, I, I think most of the people here are, then why would you wait for the government to give you something? 
Mm. It's the, the the dependence mentality. It's go, you know, go out and get get, you know, get what you want legally. I mean, uh, yeah. don't rob a bank, but <laughs> yes, if you can. So, moving to music. Yes. What's what's the deal with that? Um, you mean what? What I what, like? what what got you into it? You also have songs on Spotify, like I discovered yesterday. Oh, you did. <laughs> um, yeah, I make music when I can. Yeah, um, I liked music since I was a child, and uh, I like rock, rock and roll, hard rock, particularly metal. Mm. Since I was ten or, or eleven, and yes. I, th- I think the first record that I bought was a live album by ACDC so I played it, it's fascinating I don't know I grew up with you know the videos in the 80s where you get this crazy guys jumping off stage yes. with the, you know during the guitar solo and when you're 13 that's that's all you want to do I I like to play in, instruments I didn't get any particular training the, it didn't go to school I just got some instrument got a guitar got a bass a saxophone i uh, drums mm. uh, i learned to play in time and it's just a passion that's it i listen to music all the time sometimes i put some music in my classes um i may put some extra question for extra points in some some midterm about <laughs> heard about some of that yeah yes the answers are about <laughs> music music and yeah. like bands and stuff exactly that's pretty cool and we usually have this ritual at the end of episodes where we ask our guests what their favorite movie and tv show oh a uh, tv show i would have to go recently probably either break well no both breaking bad and the spin-off better call Saul. Mm. that's that's yeah the entire thing be- because they're they're related so they cross into each other a movie oh, there's too many one uh i think bleed for this i haven't heard about that what bleed is- for this is the real story of a a boxer, an yeah. Italian American boxer. Oh God, I forgot the name. Okay. But but anyway, he, he wins a title. Okay. And then uh, this is a very non-disciplined person. Goes out drinking and partying, you, you know, with you know, strippers and all the rest of it. Yeah. Buys a huge car, I think a Fer- Ferrari, and the day after has a near fatal accident, breaks all of his spine. So he's paralyzed. And despite that, he started to train se- secretly against the advice of his family, his dog. He lost everything. His wife left him, everything. So starts to train again in a basement. Um, and sure enough, then he gets back into shape and wins a I'm new title. That. And that's and this, a, this real, a true story real story. Like yeah, no, no. Tab, uh, past can't remember the name but the the movie starts um miles tanner i think mm. yeah and it's great absolutely great this is amazing and like the story it's it's, it's very well going, done it's yeah, very through the ups and downs of mm, life mm, and mm, mm, mm. it's it it you know it's got a good lesson in it so don't don't give up would be the lesson the lesson yeah. any final remarks before we wrap this up um, yeah, all students need to prepare for their finals. Of course. Um, <laughs> the assignments. The assignments are. That's pretty much it. Try to study. Uh, choose your courses wisely for spring. Yes. What else? Um, look at East Asia for your future. And What about, I'm graduating next spring. So next spring. You are? Yeah. So what, <laughs> what can you, I? How are you doing with your capstone? Let me ask you a, a few questions now. What's your what's your thesis now? What so, what is your capstone? So I'm in software engineering right now. Mm-hmm. So for capstone one, we have two. We have to develop pr- two prototypes. Okay. For our like final submission, which is next semester. Yep. So right now we are looking at two problems. One of them it's like the extended wave, uh, like 
patient waiting time at emergency rooms for hospitals? I was thinking something more. Uh, anyone who in, in your department who's really good with Linux? Uh, yes. Can you guys come up with a way for Linux to run some programs that we really need, like Microsoft Op- Office? Because there is no acceptable variation uh, and I don't want it to install Vine all the time and yeah. I, I don't want to do that uh, so I would ask somebody who's really good please come up with a way to run I don't think there some, is I know yeah. but please try still keep but trying that if, like, if, if, you are, if you are in high need of like Microsoft Office why don't you use Windows Yanni I personally dislike Microsoft and what it represents then and why the are person you? who I use Linux Okay. Yeah, and I don't buy Apple products the same. Uh, you see, a, a lot of students here like to complain about capitalism. God yeah. knows why. Uh, using a Mac, an iPhone, uh, nice clothes, they got a car. I say, oh, I, I don't, I don't think you hate capitalism as much as you think you do. But anyway, so I don't buy the products of the companies that that I do not like, mm. and I certainly do not buy Microsoft or Apple, that's for sure. So Linux is okay. But there's things you can't run on Linux. There are some cool apps. Uh, well, I think like the Google suite you can... No, no, no. No? no, no. There's one good thing that Bill Gates, which is oh, despicable, but it, there's one good thing that, that he did. That's the Office package, mm. the Office suite. That's the only thing that that company ever did well. Still, we got yeah. a lot of bugs, but I mean, Microsoft it itself is garbage. It should be illegal. Okay, I'm gonna ask out the Linux wizard and see what's. Uh, if you mind. got some names, then I'll, I'll probably need some help in the yeah, next, yeah, I'm gonna in the next some weeks names, for changing all my but systems. But I can't promise anything because, like, as I've heard, it's. No, I don't know. It's almost impossible that yeah. the architecture is completely. Different. Dependent on yeah, that yeah. operating system. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's insane. Anyway. This has been a good chat. It's a very Pleasure. enlightening one, especially for me. That all right. Uh, really did you go through all, through all the things you wanted yeah, to... Yeah, we covered everything. Co- uh, Korea, everything. Iraq, all of them. Okay, okay, good enough. So for everyone listening to this, thank you for tagging along. Thanks a lot. This has been a really enlightening episode. Thank you. So many valuable information. Study... Asian languages yes and develop a good mentality yeah thank you have a good day everyone and bye bye